Hello and welcome again to this particular session. So today in this particular session, we'll begin with question number 11 because quite obviously in the last one we did till up to question number 10. So question number 11 deals with your AS7, deals with contract accounts. It is quite easy, not tough at all. In this particular question, the first thing which you have been given and let me tell you, it seems in the examination they have simply taken a screenshot of this particular question from somewhere and imposed over there so that is why it is not quite clear but anyway fixed contract with the escalation clause is given to you with and amount given to you is 1000 lakhs then we have been given work certified work not certified given 109 but when i will take later on work not certified i will subtract 4 lakh why i will subtract 4 lakh, I will simply take 105 lakh. Reason being is that in bracket they have written that work not certified includes 75 lakh worth of material out of which 4 lakhs are still remaining. So if 4 lakh worth of material are still remaining, quite obviously you, have, you will consider work not uncertified as 105 lakh. Then estimated further cost to complete the contract is 409. 495 progress payment received as you know as and when <clears throat> we get our work done we ask the other party the contract uh, the contractors will ask the contractor party to make some payment that is known as progress payment and to be received and we have to receive only 140 but these are irrelevant line in the light of the solution which we have to do Further, it is given in the question that escalation cost, so there might be an agreement between these two party contractors and the contractor. So they have imposed an escalation clause that because today we are starting the contract and by the time contract would finish, as you know, in case of what we call long term contract, it is quite possibility that during the interalia period price may rise. So escalation cost is uh, five percent and according to the con and accordingly. The contract price will increase by 5%. So your contract price which is fixed actually but it will increase by 5%. Now what is the actually uh, demand of this particular question? The demand of this particular question is calculate the expected loss to be recognized immediately as per para 35 of accounting standard AS7 revised. As you know better than I actually the para 35, uh, para 35 of this particular standard states that if you are expecting in the beginning itself that finally this contract will have a loss then that loss must be recognized in the very first year itself correct so if at the time of commencement of contract you are visualizing that finally you are going to have a loss then quite obviously you will have to recognize the entire loss in the very first year but how we are going to do the solution just pay attention over here it if you have gone through as7 you must have noticed actually in order to solve the question first of all we need to find out how much cost we have incurred so far till up to this particular point of time generally it is given in a very clear manner but in this question it is given in this fashion that work certified actually is 500 lakh your work certified is 500 lakh correct so this is your certified work and uncertified work as i told you you will consider 105 and not 109 so that means this much of cost you have already incurred till up to this particular point of time this is your cost incurred so far that is 605 now what is your estimated cost the further estimated cost to complete the contract is 495 so finally you will by the time the contract will get completed total cost at total cost would have been incurred 1100 so that is your total cost so first thing we compute while solving the what we call case studies under as7 generally is to find out what we call total cost of the contract now it becomes then easier for us to know what is the percentage of completion because so far we have incurred this much of cost that is 605 and final cost is 1100 so we will take the percentage of completion that is 605 cost incurred till date divided by total cost of the contract that is equal to 1100 lakhs so 55 percent of the contract is completed so quite obviously now we have a right to recognize 55 percent of the revenue what is revenue revenue is your contract price what is the contract price contract price is 1000 so 1000 lakhs is contract price but don't forget and let it skip out of your memory in this particular case that there is an escalation clause and question has very clearly given that your contract price will increase by 5% so you will take 5% of 1000 so your fixed contract even though it is fixed but it will now be considered as 1050 so your total contract price is 1050 55% is completed so you have a right to recognize what we call for 577.50 lakhs worth of revenue in the current year but 
in the current year you are going to recognize 577.50 as revenue but you will have to recognize the cost also generally in recognition of cost is not going to pose us many challenges the reason being is that we know that how much cost we have incurred we have already incurred till up to this particular date 605 lakhs certified work plus uncertified work so i will recognize in the current year revenue as 577.50 and cost as 605.50 the difference will reflect indirectly when i will record in contract account contract revenue and of course the cost quite obviously indirectly means i have recognized in the current year 27.50 in 27.50 as my loss isn't it or not this is basically your loss because when you prepare your contract account and you have prepared it several times uh, in your earlier phases of education you put the contract revenue towards the credit side cost towards the debit side you never lies loss directly so the difference of these two that mean you have in the current year already recognized 27.50 but as i told you when you are expecting a loss over the entire life of the contract the, then section 35 states that entire loss must be actually then recognized in the sense means we have already recognized 27.50 we must also recognize expected loss now how we are going to compute the expected loss as i told you it is not a very tough nut to crack all you have to do is that you will have to compare your total cost of the contract with the total revenue now in this case i have already told you that total revenue is equal to 1050 and total cost of completion will be 1100 your cost will be higher in comparison to your revenue so finally your total loss will be equal to 50 lakh because your total loss will be equal to 50 lakh correct out of that in the current year you have already recognized 27.50 i told you so your expected loss that means you will have to make a provision for expected loss to the extent of 22.50 so this is your correct answer is it clear to you now the next question is tough in the sense because this question again is included in my study notes which i have given to you under as 16 and i have solved a case study on it in fact two case studies we have solved but i do not know how many of you have gone through accounting standard as 16 but still i will solve it for you don't worry about that as far as this particular question is concerned and it is tough question no doubt about that even when i was solving the case study you must have noticed over there also i proclaimed that it is pretty tough so you need to pay extra attention so darya ganj cooperative society darya ganj cooperative society limited has borrowed a sum of 12.5 million now there is a darya ganj cooperative society they took a loan of us dollar 12.50 that means they have taken loan from outside india quite naturally because if they would have taken the loan from india it would have been in indian currency but they have taken the loan in foreign currency indirectly means they have taken the loan from a foreign organization or from a foreign country the total amount is 12.50 million correct 1 million is equal to 10 lakh if i am not wrong so us dollar 12.50 million at the commencement of the financial year 2020-21 for its solar energy project at libor libor means london international bank organization rate so it is also known as london interbank rate london interbank rate is considered as a benchmark rate that is 1% and plus 4% that means total interest is equal to 5% so they have taken this loan at an interest rate of 5% you need to understand this first of all second point is that the interest is payable at the end of the respective financial year now the question says that loan was availed at the then rate of 45 that means when we took the loan at that time the rate of exchange was rupees 45 to us dollar that mean one us dollar was equal to rupees 45 at the time when we took the loan while the rate on 31st of march at the end of the year the rate has gone up to now rupees 48 one dollar is now equal to 48 but when we took the loan at the time the rate was 45 now it is 48 now question further states that had darya ganj cooperative society limited borrowed the rupee equivalent in india that mean if this organization would have had borrowed the amount from uh, or would have taken the loan from indian uh, in indian and in indian currency then interest would have been charged at the rate of 11 percent this is the question now in this particular question what i am supposed to do just pay attention here i've solved this question for you first of all you will compute the interest 
on the foreign loan no doubt about it your interest for the period will be very simple to compute it is not a tough task you will consider the amount of loan which is dollar 12.50 12.50 dollar 12.50 is your amount of loan because you have taken this loan at 5 percent 1 plus 4 percent so your rate of interest is 5 percent so your total interest will be this much dollar 12.50 into 5 percent this is your total interest till the end of the year but at the end of the year when you will reach you will multiply it with the closing rate that is rupees 48 to no interest for the period your interest for the period will be equal to this much is it clear to you interest for the period will be equal to 30 you must understand this thing first of all we have to find out interest i have so far computed only interest and nothing else i have computed only interest correct I have to compute the amount of interest. Now, second thing, what we have to compute? Second thing is that we compute basically the increment in the liability because we have taken a loan. Quite obviously, when we took the loan, rate was 45. But by the end of the year, actually, rate has gone up by 3 because earlier it was 45 when we took the loan and now $1 is equal to 48. So, next thing which you are supposed to compute is equal to increase in liability. Now, what, what would be your amount of liability? Amount of liability will be, and we generally write it in this manner, increase in liability towards principal. Towards principal. Your principal amount of loan is actually 12.5 million. Correct? So, how much liability has increased on account of what we call increase in principal amount? Obviously, when you took the loan, it was 45, but now the rate is 48. So, it has gone up by 3. Your liability will increase by 37.50. This is rupees 3. Or you can write in bracket 48 minus 45. So, now your principal amount of liability is 37.50. Correct? 37.50. Now, the next thing which you are supposed to compute is you have to imagine that if you would have borrowed this loan from India, then how much interest you would have had paid? Actually, reality is this, that you have taken this particular loan from outside India. But now we are imagining, correct, nationally we would think that how much interest we would have had paid if the same loan would have been taken from in Indian currency or from Indian organization. Interest, if loan would have been taken in Indian currency. Don't think it is tough. It looks tough, but it is not tough. 12.5 million is your amount of loan. And here you will have to exercise great amount of caution that you have to multiply it with the rate which is prevailing on the date of the transaction. Because if you would have taken the loan of 12.5 million in Indian currency, then you would have, then your amount of loan would have been 12.50 into 45 because at the time the rate would have been what we call 45. And 11% is rate of interest. In that case, your interest would have been 61.875. Remember one thing, right now you have taken this loan from outside India and your interest is just about 30 lakhs or 30 million, whatever it is. However, if this particular amount of loan you would have had taken from Indian organization, in that case, your interest would have been equal to this much, correct? Obviously, you are gaining by taking this particular loan as a, at a lesser rate of interest from outside India. Right now, you are gaining, no doubt about that. And now, after computing the interest, after computing the interest on foreign loan and same loan if it would have been taken from an Indian organization, then this interest would have been 61.875. Now I will take the difference of these two interest. Here I have written difference between interest 61.875 minus 30 is equal to 31.875. What does this difference and what is the use of this difference? What I am going to use? Now what is the use for me? The use for me is that when I will take the difference between these two, it means we call it increase in liability is 37.50, my increase in liability because when we take the loan from outside India, on the one hand we gain but on the other side actually we lose in the sense that our amount of liability will be a little bit higher, correct 37.50. So increase in liability portion is 37.50 and out of this 37.50, 
what portion of this increase in liability should be treated as borrowing cost that is the basic point what portion of this increase in liability should be treated as borrowing cost in order to compute that we have to do this much of what we call workings you can say that way around so increased in liability is 37.50 now i have come to the conclusion that this difference amount will be considered as portion of the increase in liability and it will be treated as what we call borrowing cost that means what portion of increase in liability will be treated as borrowing cost that is always equal to the difference of these two interests is it clear to you and finally question has also asked what is your total borrowing cost so your total borrowing cost obviously see here interest we have to pay it is a part of borrowing cost because ultimately we are taking we have taken a foreign loan no doubt about that and this foreign loan has been taken for the uh, what we call construction of a solar energy project so quite obviously this interest will be capitalized no doubt this is 30 it will be capitalized besides that you will also capitalize this particular portion correct so that mean total borrowing cost will be equal to 61.875 actually in the question they have written none of these but if you will add these two it is equal to 61 lakh 87500 so uh, i think the first one is correct so now we come over to the next part next part is in the next question the next question again same question is available under uh, accounting standard 26 if you have gone through that only thing is that our figures are different over there when the question which is in our notes we have written a figure of 530 instead of 60 and similarly rest of the figures are changed however the content is absolutely same but anyway question number 13 states that Messrs. Tusar limited is developing a new production process so they are developing a new production process correct some technique they are developing you can say and during the financial year ended 31st of March 2016 the total expenditure incurred on the process is 60 lakhs well fine the production process met the criteria for recognition as an intangible asset on 31st of December 2019. It is very important. As you know, if you have studied what we call AS26, which I requested you to come out prepared with, but anyway, I do not know how many among you. On 31st of December, on 31st of December 2019, question states that this particular production process met the asset recognition criteria quite obviously then it will be recognized as an intangible asset in the sense that now i will have to capitalize this amount but how much amount i will have to capitalize you will have to exercise here expenditure till date was 32 lakh actually total expenditure which you you incurred in the process is 60 lakh but till date the total expenditure is 32 lakh total expenditure is 32 lakh now whatever amount you have spent out of 60 lakh will be debited to profit and loss account no doubt about that but the important point is that on 31st of uh, 31st of 3 2019 how much i will capitalize see out of 60 lakh i have spent 32 lakhs is it clear to you so whatever remaining is there that will be considered see out of total 60 32 lay, 32 lakh is already spent so rest of the expenditure will be considered so rest of the expenditure will be capitalized that will be that means 32 lakh will be debited to profit and loss account we are not concerned with that however 28 lakh worth of amount will be considered as the capitalized value of the intangible asset is it clear to you or not out of 60 lakh 32 lakh which we have already spent will be considered will be considered as what we call part of expended profit and loss account while 28 lakh at this particular value this particular asset will be recognized is it clear to you or not that mean out of 60 lakh 28 lakh will be capitalized because 32 lakh we have already spent is it clear now further the question states that it is very important because many among us could commit a mistake by capitalizing 32 you need to understand expenditure incurred till date was 32 that means 32 you already spent so whatever rest of the expenditure is there related to this particular process will now be recognized as an asset now the further question says that further expenditure incurred on the process till the end of 31st 3 2021 is 90 lakh 
so you will add now you will add to 2890 lakh further expenditure so now on 31st of march 2021 technically the total cost of this particular intangible asset will be 118 when i will prepare the balance sheet as on 31st 3 to 31st of 3 2021 i should logically take the carrying amount as 118 because once the asset is capitalized, whatever expenditure which we are going to incur on it, logically those expenditure will also be capitalized. So that is why the value will be 118. But question further states that the recoverable amount is 82 lakh. Question further states that recoverable amount actually is 82 lakh on this particular date. So as you know better than I, under <coughs> AS28, we have talked about this particular fact under AS28. We talked about this particular fact that if your recoverable amount is less, if your recoverable amount is less in comparison to your carrying amount, so in this case, your recoverable amount is 82 while carrying amount is 118, correct? So the lower figure will be recorded. Now you will consider carrying amount on 31st 3 2021 as 82. You cannot reflect the asset at 118 because your recoverable amount is 82. So on 31st, on 31st of 3, 2021, you will reflect the item at 82. Now the difference between these two, as you know better than I, is known as impairment loss. This impairment loss will be debited to profit and loss account. And if I will take the difference, I think it will be equal to 6, 3, 36 lakhs. So 36 lakh is the correct answer in this case because question ultimately is asking us on 31st of March 2021, how much we should charge to profit a loss account? That is 36 lakhs. Is it clear to you? Next question 14. I must admit it's a tricky question, but not tough one. Indirectly, the theme, the theme of AS29 or in AS37. However, this question is in the light of AS29. Correct? The theme of AS29 in simple words is that you have to make provision. Actually, question is asking, uh, the director believed that outcome of this estimate the amount of contingent loss. Question is simply asking us to compute the amount of contingent liability and contingent liability itself is a sort of loss you can say in this case, correct? Now, contingent liability basically means, basically means on the reporting date, you have a uh, you have an obligation. It is known as present obligation. Present obligation means obligation on the reporting date. Obligation on the reporting date. Suppose on the reporting date, a case is being filed against you. Correct? The case is still running. Other party is claiming some damages out of you. So quite obviously, because a case is running, you are under some sort of obligation. In case if you happen to lose the case, you will have to compensate the other party, indemnify the other party. So on the reporting date, if you have an obligation, this is known as present obligation. What is present obligation? The obligation on the reporting date, number one. Now, if on the reporting date, you have a hunch that there is probability of outflow of funds. So if there is probability of outflow of funds, if there is probability of outflow of funds, in that particular case, this particular liability will be recognized as liability, provided it can also be what we call measured reliably, reliably. But if you feel that there is no probability of outflow of funds, then you will simply reflect it by way of note. That is the theme of AS29. So, actually, we so many cases are running against our parties. See here in the first paragraph, it is given that 10 cases and remaining 5 cases. And question has given you some probability. That probability of winning the first 10 cases is 60%. And then, but some of, some of the director might feel that, no, we might lose the case. So, 30% probability is that we may lose the case in that case. We will have to give 90,000 what we call per case because question below has written that outcome of each case, case is independent. That means you will have to give to the each party 90,000, but only 30% are of the opinion. However, many are of the opinion that we may have to give a higher amount of compensation, although only 10%, 0.1%. 
zero point one means ten percent. Sixty percent is are of the opinion that will win the case. So in that case, there there won't be any probability of outflow of funds. However, in these two cases, in case if such a situation would arise, suppose if such a situation would arise, how much compensation I will have to pay? In that case, see here, I have written ninety thousand rupees. Ninety thousand rupees. 0.3 means 30 percent, and 10 cases it is given. First 10 cases, so 2 lakh 70 thousand ultimately. If this situation materializes, if this situation materializes, in that case I will have to pay 2 lakh 70. On the contrary, if this particular situation arises, in this particular situation compensation amount is quite high, 2 lakh. But only 10 percent are of the opinion that this this situation may arise. So 2 lakh into 10 percent into 10 cases don't forget to multiply it with the 10 cases it is given so in this case you will have to pay 2 lakh so under the first 10 cases your total provision comes to 4 lakh 70 but still there uh, there are some more cases for the remaining five cases if such a situation will arise in that case 60,000 is compensation 30 percent into 5 because these are related to 5 cases so my compensation will be equal to 90,000 and in case this particular situation would materialize I will write 1 lakh into 20 percent into 5 cases 1 lakh. So according to the conservatism because conservatism basically means all the probable losses must be recognized so we'll have to what we call make a provision for contingent loss of this much is it clear to you you will total them up it comes to six lakh sixty and six lakh sixty is the correct answer so this is how you are going to do this particular question correct question number 15 is quite simple question number 15 if you have gone through as12 which deals with government grants correct and with lots of cases, I explained that particular chapter. So you should be in a position to do this of your own. Uh, rupees 25 lakh received from the local authority for providing medical facilities to the employees will be credited to profit or loss account or deducted from what we call medical expenses. Yes, when we receive the grant for the purpose of meeting some revenue sort of expenditure, in that case, we have a right that we can reflect this particular we can reflect this profit and loss, uh, sorry, this particular grant in this fashion. Either we can show this amount of grant separately, this is one option, or simply whatever expenses I have incurred on medical expenses, from there on I can subtract the amount of the grant and simply I can reflect the net amount. So question, this particular sentence is correct, it is true, it is not false. In fact, the question is asking which is the false statement. Second one, there is no second one. Third, rupees 50 lakh received from the state government for setting up a water treatment plant. I told you if we receive the grant, correct, especially for depreciable asset, in that particular asset, my entry generally is, if you remember, lots of entries I did when I explained the chapter. We received what we call 50 lakh. So bank account debit to government grant. This is the first entry I will write, 50 lakh. And then, cost of the plant purchased is 150 before that actually we purchased a plant water tank plant account debit to bank account 150 this grant which we received from government now will be credited to plant account is it clear to you so i will write government grant account debit to plant account 50 50 so when i will credit it to plant account what will happen the cost of the plant will get reduced now cost of the plant will be 150 minus 50 that is equal to 100 it will be equal to 100 so plant will be shown in the books at 100 lakhs without any doubt so you are going to reflect it at 100 lakhs so again this particular statement is also correct and similarly the last one is land worth 100 lakhs received free of cost from the state government as per a as per as 12 if we happen to receive what we call any asset from the government grant uh, at what we call the uh, at a particular price in this case the price is 100 lakh but you received at free of course sorry in that case even such asset will be reflected but will be reflected at nominal value by putting of one or hundred as i told you so even this particular statement is correct but remember one thing same thing if i would have gone to NDAS, correct under the NDAS land worth 100 lakh received from free of cost would have been reflected at fair value 
However, under AS12, we reflect it at what we call nominal value. So again, this statement in the light of existing AS is correct. So all these statements are correct and we do not know which is the next one because under 2, they have written none of these. Actually, your answer is correct in this case because the three statements which are available with us, correct, all these statements are true. Which of the following statement is false? This is the next question. Which of the following statement is false? Remember one thing, which is the false statement? Again, they have written in first all of these. We will see later on. While preparing balance sheet of Hariyom Limited. Now, Hariyom Limited is a concern. Hariyom Limited. Uh, in the operating cycle, operating cycle of this particular entity is 14 months. If your operating cycle is 14 months, in that case, operating cycle 14 months will be used to classify the items into current and non-current. That is the point is, rupees 30 lakhs due from a customer on 30th of April 2022. Now, this amount actually is due on 30th of April. See here, your accounting year will end, let us say, on 30th, 31st of March 2022. Let us say it is ending. But your operating cycle is of 14 months. So, within the operating cycle, this amount is due. So, Question is saying that it will be classified as non-current asset. This is wrong actually because in this particular case, it should be treated as current asset because it is due within the what we call operating cycle. 30th April 2022 will fall within 14 months. Further, the question says that under the Companies Act, free reserves do not include security premium. You must have noticed if we have gone through what we call R discussion and even two, three days back, actually I took so many classes on consolidation and what we call India ascended in three. So many times I use the word for security premium free reserve. Many among you might have at a time got jitters. But remember now actually companies like 2013 states very clearly that security premium is uh, part of free reserve. Correct. So uh, which of the following statement under the companies at 2030 free reserves do not include uh, security premium account. Correct. So again do not include actually it includes so again it will become a false statement this statement is also false this is also false so far both these two are false statement without an iota of doubt because free reserves will include security premium this is also false figures appearing in financial statement of the company may be rounded off to nearest crores only if the turnover is 1000 however it is written 100 again it is false so all these are false, so your answer is correct. Your first answer is correct. All are false statement. Question number 17. Now, this question deals with AS19. And I told you even in the last class that when you come to the present class, please come prepared and just had a look a bit of over what we call AS19. So many questions of this nature are in our notes. Almost every question, especially after 10th, Till up to 1920, I think all questions are of similar nature. Correct in this question, but anyway, in this question, you need to be quite well aware, quite well aware of two, three things. Uh, just to remind you a way bit, for example, I'm a lesser. I'm a lesser. Correct. And let us say, cost of my asset is 6 lakhs, just for simplicity. And this asset has been given by me to you. You are the lessee, I am the lesser. And for a three years period. Generally, when I will give the asset on lease, I, obviously I am going to charge some amount, some series of payment over three years from you. And so many times I told you that series of payment is nothing but known as lease payments. So obviously I have given the asset to you, you are the lessee, you are going to give me payment over the what we call three years period of time. Every year you are going to pay me some amount. From my perspective, those payments will be known as minimum lease payment. Minimum lease payment. Every year I will receive something from you. These minimum lease payment can also be termed as annual payments. Correct, you are going to give me some annual payments each year. And... I will multiply after this if I will consider the present value factor at a particular rate. Let us say present value factor at a particular rate of 8% for the first year, just for simplicity's sake, is 9259. Let us say 0 0.8573 and let us say 0 0.7928. 
is our present value factor for first three years at 8%. If I multiply all these things, we get the present value. And if I will add all these items after multiplying, correct, the respective minimum lease payment with the present value factor, I will get the present value for each year. I will sum them up. The total sum will be known as present value of minimum lease payment. This is known as minimum lease payment, whatever figure I will get here. Correct. Now, as you know better than I, because you have done, you are doing what we call your financial management and you have done financial management lots of time better than I. You know, if I will add all these items, it will be equal to, I think, 2.577 zeros, something like this. It can be termed at this this can be termed as present value factor at 8% for 3 years. This is NVT factor for 3 years. You can simply say it that way round. See here, if I will multiply this item with this factor, this particular item with this particular factor, this particular item with this particular factor, then I will add all these items. It, it will give me present value of minimum lease payment. Now, if I will simply take one annual installment, don't total them up, one single installment and you multiply it with this, again you will get the same figure. Are you getting my point or not? That means, if I will take one annual lease payment or one annual lease payment and I will multiply it with 2.5770, I will get the present value of minimum lease payment. I can also get it this way around, isn't it or not? Now, in this question, which is at our disposal, I will show you later on. Actually, we are supposed to find out annual lease payment because we do not know what is the amount of annual lease payment which we charge from the lessee. So, we can find it out because if we will have this figure, if we will have this figure, I, I will divide many present value of minimum lease payment with this particular factor and I can easily get the amount of one annual installment. If I will have one annual installment, then I can have the annual installment of all the three years, then easily I can find. Actually, in this question, what is happening now, I will let you know because I am not quite sure whether you have come prepared or not. Neem Tulsi Limited has a, initiated a lease for three years. So, lease is for three years in this particular case and the cost of the machinery, you have to note it down very carefully. Initially, I took here, even in my what we call example, six lakh, expected useful life is five years. Machinery will come back to Neem Tulsi Limited under the lease agreement. We are not concerned with that. The unguaranteed, actually out of five year lease period is three years. That means the lease period covers the majority of the economic life. So it is a case of finance lease without any doubt. The unguaranteed residual value you have to note is 80,000. Unguaranteed residual value. You know the residual value is divided into two parts. Correct guaranteed residual value and unguaranteed residual value. You know, Unguaranteed residual value is given to you. Implicit rate of interest is also given to you at 8%. Implicit rate of interest here means the rate agreed upon by lesser and lessee. Both the parties mutually will, mutually and with mutual consensus will decide upon a rate that is known as implicit rate of rate. Now the now the main point, annual payments, and we haven't been given annual payments. So many questions I have done under AS19, correct, of such nature. The annual payments have been determined in such a way that the present value of minimum lease payment plus the residual value that is unguaranteed residual value is equal to the cost of the machinery. This line is of trillion nature. As per this particular line, because this particular line will help you in solving the question. Just a moment, I told you that cost of the asset as per this particular line, the Present value question says that annual payments have been determined in such a manner that present value of minimum lease payment plus present value of unguaranteed residual value is equal to the cost. Now, in this question, we have the cost. With the help of this line, see, we can solve the entire question. We have the cost 6 lakh. And question states very clearly that present value of minimum lease payment plus present value of unguaranteed residual value is equal to cost. Now we have 80,000 as unguaranteed residual value and factors have been given to us which I wrote over here also and it is given over here. You can see present value factor at 8% is given to you. Correct? So these factors is given you unguaranteed residual value. So I will use the third year factor that is 0 0.7938. 
by multiplying it, I get 63,500. So I am able to find out the present value of unguaranteed residual value. Now, if I deduct present value of unguaranteed residual value from the cost, I can find out the present value of minimum lease payment. So present value of minimum lease payment must be equal to 5,36,496. Is it clear to you or not? Now, this was the point I was trying to tell you. Again, here I was doing the same thing for you. See here, we are, we are unaware of what is our annual lease payment, per year annual lease payment. But we have the factors and now we have the present value of minimum lease payment 5,36,496. I just told you, if I am going to divide 5,36,496 by 2.50, I can find out value of one annual installment. If I will divide 5,36,496 by 2.5770 that is total of these factors then i will get 20816 that mean one annual installment is 20186 so that mean lesser must have charged or asked the lessee to pay each year 208186 rupees is it clear to you now, if I will add all these things, so total annual lease payment will be equal to 6,24,558. this is actually. Now, question has asked us to find out unearned finance income. In order to compute unearned finance income, you should be aware of what is the your gross investment. Gross investment basically means lease payment plus guaranteed residual value plus unguaranteed residual value. C present minimum lease payment which is always equal to lease payment plus guaranteed residual value you can say gross investment is equal to see i am not saying present value of minimum lease payment i am simply saying minimum lease payment minimum lease payment plus unguaranteed less residual value unless and until otherwise stated minimum lease payment stands for annual lease payment now we just computed annual lease payment 208186 for three years that is 624558. So during the three years period, I will totally receive minimum lease payment 6,24,558 and plus unguaranteed residual value 80,000. So total will be equal to 7,04,558. This total will be equal to 704558. Some of you are writing actually. The total will be equal to 704558. Correct. Now, from the gross investment, if I will subtract the net investment, now what is net investment? Net investment is nothing but present value of minimum lease payment, which we have already computed. Present value of minimum lease payment we have computed. Net investment means present value of minimum lease payment plus present value of unguaranteed residual value. If we will add both these two, we will get the net investment, obviously 6 lakhs. So our net investment will be equal to 6 lakh and the difference will be equal to 10558. Yes, it is correct. This is your unearned finance income. So in this case, your unearned finance income will be equal to this much. Is it clear to you or not? So this is how you are going to compute this. The so first thing is that you should be aware of this particular rule that cost is always equal to present value of minimum lease payment plus present value of unguaranteed residual value. You compute the present value of unguaranteed residual value. You subtract it from this figure, you will get present value of minimum lease payment. Once you get the present value of minimum lease payment, which in this case is equal to 536496. Now you should be aware of this particular rule that if you are going to divide it with this factor, Correct, 2.5770. That is present value factor for the third year. That means total of present value factor. You will get the amount of one annual installment. One annual installment will be equal to 2,8186. So once you have found out that, it will give you that total minimum lease payment is this much. Unguaranteed residual value is 80,000. So total is Total uh, gross investment is equal to this much. From there on, you simply subtract net investment and your net investment is nothing but present value of minimum lease payment plus present value of unguaranteed residual value that is equal to 6 lakh. Your total amount will be equal to. And the difference of these two will give you what we call unearned finance income. So answer is correct in this particular case. Correct? I will come to question number 18. 
just give me a minute of time question number 20 you can do it yourself it's a theoretical question which of the following statement is true internal reconstruction is done in case of companies incurring losses yes it is correct correct internal reconstruction may be done in case of companies earning profits or incurring losses uh, Actually, it is not necessary that in internal reconstruction is done in case of companies incurring losses. It may be done in case of companies which are earning profits or incurring losses provided they have lesser amount of working capital. So, it can be done even under these cases. Correct? So, an internal reconstruction is done in case of companies earning profits. This cannot be true. So, out of these statements, this statement seems to be the best one. Correct? So, your answer number 3 is correct. This is your correct answer. No doubt about that. Now, coming to question number 19. This is very important question. And again, this question is from AS22. And same question with same figure is available in my notes also. Here, we have been given accounting profit as 15 lakh. Book profit as per minimum alternative tax mat as you call it is 8,75,000 book profits and profit as per income tax department is 1,50,000 and tax rate is given to you as 30% minimum alternative tax rate is 7.5% but in our notes same question is available but over there my minimum rate of tax was 10%. This, this is the only difference. Anyway, further it is given deferred tax asset liability as per AS22 and amount of tax to be debited to profit and loss account. This is what we have to find out. It is not a very tough task. Provided you are well aware of all the concepts, especially with respect to accounting profit, especially with respect to tax as per income tax profit, and finally tax as per mat. So for simplification, I have done it in this manner. Just pay attention actually. Tax as per accounting profit. Now, accounting profit is given to us as 15 lakh. Rate is 30%. So, first thing I have to do is to find out my tax as per accounting profit. Second, I have to find out tax as per income tax. So, income tax, income as per income tax is 1 lakh 50. Tax rate is 30%. So, 45,000 will be what we call profit. Uh, sorry, tax as per income tax. Now, tax as per mat. Because according to mat my income will be considered 8,75,000 and rate of tax is 7.5 so tax liability minimum altern as per what we call minimum alternative tax my tax liability will be 65,625 correct now we have to find out tax expense what is tax expense so many times I have told you when we discuss the concepts of what we call AS26 tax expense is always equal to current tax plus deferred tax what is your tax expense? Tax expense means tax as per accounting profit. Now, tax as per accounting profit, we computed 4,50,000. Current tax always means tax as per income tax authorities, 45,000. So, we have both these two figures. I will separate 45 from 450. I will get 4,5,000 as my deferred tax. Question has also asked us to compute this particular figure. So, 4,5,000 is your deferred tax, correct? Now, next point is that question has also asked how much you are going to debit to your profit and loss account as tax expense for the current year. You have found out what we call profit as per uh, your accounts. You have found out the profit as per tax, minimum alternative tax. Now, one more thing you have to find out that is known as excess of mat over current tax. Excess of mat, how much mat? MAT means minimum alternative tax, that is 65,625. Now, what is your current tax? Current tax is 45,000. So, excess of minimum alternative tax over current tax will be 20,625. So, how much you are going to debit to profit and loss account? Your current tax 45,000, your deferred tax 45,000 and this excess. So, 4,70,625 you are going to debit to your profit and loss account. This is how you will have to solve this question. Yes, this answer is correct. Deferred tax is this much and even your amount debited to profit and loss account 470625 is also correct. Now, there is an interesting question, question number 18. With that, we will come to the end of this particular session and in the next session, I will take up all the short questions, correct? All the short questions, all 20 short questions. Now, in this question, 
this question looks very innocuous very simple question it looks actually but the question is not as simple as it looks to be very honest with you just okay question number 18 because i think 17 we have done yes 17 we have done question number 18 says an engineering goods company provides sales warranty for two years to its customer there is an engineering company provides after sales service warranty for two years that means if you are going to if you are going to buy the product today from me i will i am going to give you a guarantee that from today for the next two years we are under an obligation to provide you sales warranty correct if some defect would arise obviously we are going to compensate it no doubt about that based on the past experience the company has the following policy for making provision for warranties on the invoice amount on the remaining balance of warranty period on the remaining balance of the warranty period if the warranty period is less than remaining warranty period balance pay attention towards this particular line remaining warranty period period remaining warranty period is very important correct if the remaining warranty period is less than one year you are going to give a provision of you are going to charge a provision or create a provision of two percent if remaining warranty period is more than one year actually total period is two years no doubt about that correct so if remaining warranty period is more than one year you are going to give a provision of three percent the company question now states that company has raised the invoices as under an invoice date is given to you in this manner first of all it is given that on 19th of january you have raised an invoice of forty thousand. this is one second on 29th you have raised an invoice of 25 and third on 15th of october you have raised an invoice of what we call 90000 question is asking us the amount we have to compute which we will debit to profit a loss account for the year ended 31st of march 2021 how much amount i am going to debit to profit a loss account when i am going to do the accounting on 31st of march 2021 see here this is tricky question it is not an easy question to be very honest with you because it looks very simple but it is not as simple as it seems from the outside correct just allow me because lots of writings overwritings have been done now what you have to do this is the date on which you have to find out the provision this is the date on which you have to find out the provision how much provision you are going to debit to profit and loss account and that this is your current reporting date and the preceding reporting date will be 31st 3 2020 quite obviously correct actually why i am saying that this is the current reporting date and this is the preceding reporting date because at the end of the year when i am going to create provision I will first of all compute what will be the amount of provision as at 31st of 3 2021 and from there on I will subtract the provision which I must have created on 31st of 3 2020 that will be considered as opening provision. The difference of these two provisions will be debited to the current year's profit and loss account but the important point is that how I am going to compute the amount of provision it looks easy but it is tough honestly speaking. Now think on such lines. Think on such lines. You have raised a bill. You have raised a bill on 19th of January. 19th of January 2019. 19th of January 2019. If I am raising this bill today, on 19th of January 2021, one year will elapse, no doubt about that. On 19th, 19 january 2021 second year will elapse please pay attention what i am trying to make you understand it is very important now my uh, we have to take care of these two financial years 
31st 3 2020 will fall somewhere here 31st i will write it with another pen 31st of 3 2000 uh, first year 20 will fall somewhere here see here when i will make the provision on this date with respect to this how much time period how much time period is remaining that i have to consider very very important very very important correct you raised a bill on this particular date. Already one year has elapsed because 19 1, 19 till up to 19 1, 2020, one year period has already gone by. That means when I am going to make the provision on 40,000, I am going to make the provision on this date, but I will try to find out from this date how much period is remaining. I am not concerned with the fact that how much period is remaining. Actually, I am concerned with the fact whether out of two years, how much time has elapsed. Now, quite obviously, when I will reach at this particular date, I must say, I must say that more than, what happened? I must say that more than one, more than one year period has already gone by. See, actually, till up to here, 12 months will elapse and some more time, say two more months. That means out of two years, almost 14 months have gone by. So remaining time period, I'm trying to tell you the remaining time period. That is why I told you remaining period. So when I'm going to make the provision on 31st of 3, 2020, how much provision I'm going to make? Because remaining period in respect of 40,000 is less than one year. That is why I will make a provision of 40,000. So this is the provision I will make. 40,000 into 2% 800. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear to you? Remaining time period till up to this particular date. Correct. When I will make the provision on this particular date, you check it this way around. How much time period has already gone by from the raising of the bill till this particular date? Obviously, uh, out of two years, you can say 14 months have already elapsed. So quite obviously, less than one year period is remaining. So 2% provision you are going to make. Similarly, the next bill was raised on 29th of January. I told you the question looks innocuous and it is very, very difficult and nowhere it is solved in a detailed manner. So that is why student and everyone is having the problem. And I should not make arrogant remarks, but I think such detailed solution you are getting only through one source i need not require to tell the name and especially i'm not getting the tons of comments which i expected of you this is the only depressing and disgusting factor and sometime i feel that i should not actually continue with this series of lectures honestly speaking but anyway next point next bill actually has been raised on 29th of january 29th of january 2020 First of all, remember one thing, this bill which you are raising, it is, you can say, active for the next two years, no doubt about it. But first, I will see on 31st of 3, 2020, only three months period have gone by till up to this particular date because 29 January, only February and March. So only two year period. A two months time period has gone by that mean when i'm going to make the provision here in respect of this bill which was raised on 29th of january that is to the extent of 25000 so only two months have gone by so remaining period is still more than what we call one year and if remaining period is more than one year you are going to create a provision of three percent so you will create a provision of 25000 into three percent 750 1650 that mean on this date my provision will be equal to 1650 how we computed that is very important now we will reach here 31st of 3 2021 on 31st of 3 2021 i need not require to create any provision on 40000 because two years period have already gone by correct and you can now compute it by yourself two years period have already left so there is no question of creating any pre any provision because our warranty period is, period is active only for first two years. However, remaining time period for 25,000 will be less than because on this date, on this date, uh, uh, what we call out of two years, only remaining period is hardly two, three months. So 
If remaining period is less than one year, you will create a provision of 2% that is 500 and on 90,000 because you raised this bill on 15th of October 2020. So only six months period have gone by. So remaining period is more than one year. You are going to create a provision of 3% 2700. Total provision will be 3200. So at the end, you are going to create a provision of 3200. Your opening provision is 1650. And whatever difference will be opening provision is equal to just let me check it out. I think it is 1550. 800 plus 750 is equal to 1550. It is equal to 1550. So I will subtract 1550 and then I will be able to get the answer. I think so. Provided answer is correct. I am not going to change my answer. That is also very important. So 1550 minus 3200, 1650 is correct. So this is how you are going to find out the answer. And let me tell you, many, many among us are simply stretching their hairs, actually, how the answer is 1650, but it is correct, provided you are familiar with all the rules of the provisions. So these are the first 20 questions. And in fact, in fact, I just want to tell you, uh, I have solved this question, this question, this question, this question. Yes, yesterday we were talking about question number 9. Honestly speaking, if we will consider the date as on 31st 3, 2021, you will solve this question in this fashion. Because you took the loan on 1st of June 2019, so your total interest on 120 lakh at the rate of 14% will be for 10 months, that will be for 14. And then you can find out how much is capitalized and how much will be taken as what we call taken to profit and loss account. You can compute in that case, your answer will be this much, not matching at all with this one, simply because I told you question is not given to us in a complete manner. If any one of you is having complete question, do let me know that so that then we can solve it. But if I presume that we are preparing account on 31st of 3, 2021, then your answers will be like this. Is it clear to you? In that case, your answers will be like that. So, however, question is not tough. And any other question? No. And there was one question with respect to NBFC. Again, I have solved this question. Answer is 1205. As I told you, this question is also given in our notes. Correct? Only thing is that you should be aware of with what, what we call provisions rates. Correct? So, these are the questions, solution given. You can pause, note it down, and then you can solve this question. So, out of 20 questions, one question I could not do, reason being is that uh, it is incomplete. So if you have got the complete question, in fact, I have done on my part this question, question number nine also, but I have taken a presumption date of 31st, 3, 2021. In that case, your answers will be like this. So next time when I will meet you, I will do complete section, be all 20 questions in it. It's correct. So first two sections are very vital. You have every chance out of 40, at least to score in the vicinity of 30 to 40. Correct. So... Till next time, if I'm not going to have today more than 15 comments, because we have to show to the sites also that the students are really appreciating and they are, uh, as a thanks, actually, they are uh, appreciating. So then we are in a position to tell to our sites, actually, allow us to stay what we call uh, these uh, uh, sessions for a pretty longer duration of time. But fortunately is that a student will always send request with respect to sir please open that lecture please open that lecture but they never actually take the pain of thanking us that is the only problem so anyway i will meet you in the next session provided i have already told you we will note it down our sites has given us very specific directions if you're not going to have more than what we call 100 likes and more than 10 comments then we will not allow you to release the notes anyway on such can't wait take leave of you and it's time to say goodbye